ministry in terms of abortion if you're going to have a ministry, should be ran through the local church under the auspice of the elders. Uh, the church, or the, the, the Bible, simply doesn't recognize anything else in terms of legitimate church ministry. You know, whenever you make some sort of social justice issue, um, a social issue, a cultural issue, uh, any particular sin that you might pick up on, whether it's murder or prostitution or drugs or slavery or whatever, and you replace the central focus of the church, which is the proclamation of the gospel, with trying to alleviate human suffering. You no longer have the gospel. You no longer have um, the apostolic message. What you have is humanitarian relief. What you have is a social gospel. And, of course, in the time of the Bible, um, Jesus, the apostles, they were well acquainted with the fact that Rome would often discard of their newborn babies if they weren't satisfied with, they'd throw them in a trash heap. But yet Jesus didn't instruct his apostles, go down to the pagan temples of Rome and stand out there and protest what they're doing. Of course, when you see the apostles and what they were engaged in, their concern for the poor, for example, um, their concern for the poor was, the Apostle Paul was talking about the poor church in Jerusalem. He wasn't talking about a global humanitarian effort to relieve, uh, to relieve uh, 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 poverty throughout the world. Jesus said, the poor you will have with you always. So is Jesus out of step with being humane? Um, no, folks, that's because preaching the gospel takes the priority above everything else that we can do in the, in the context of the church. So what is the focus of Heritage Grace Community Church? It is not abortion. Um, it is not prostitution. It is not human trafficking. It is not poverty. Uh, it is not uh, clothing the needy and the poor. It is not humanitarianism. The center and the focus and the foundation and the purpose of our church is Christ. Now that may sound that may sound as sort of a catch-all phrase, but really it is not. It is just another way of saying that our church is a gospel-centered church, uh, and that we do not allow anything to take the center of our church. Um, it's funny and ironic that they have a sign outside that says, "Church, repent." Well, come to find out, these gentlemen don't even go to church. So <laughs> could there be anything more um, sort of oxymoronic than that? Uh, but really, pray for those individuals outside. I, I, I know people that have gotten caught up in those circles. It really has become something of a cult. And my perspective, no longer being under the auspice or the authority of any local church, which means they're not under the authority or auspice of anything having to do remotely with the authority of Jesus Christ. I mean, the Great Commission has to do with uh, making disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe everything that was commanded. And so the, the observance of both baptism, and so I would say there in the Great Commission, baptism is sort of a, uh, by, a, you know, sort of setting down the principle for the ordinances. So I would say baptism is, is an essential component of what the authority of the church allows the church to do, which is to visibly, visibly place a person into the body of Christ, not mystically or spiritually, but visibly. And so that is something that I think only the church should do. Uh, I don't believe in private baptisms. I don't believe in a couple buddies getting together and baptizing their buddies in the back, backyard or something like that. Um, you know, I've been criticized for this, and maybe I can just kind of uh, um, open myself up to any further criticism, but to give you a quick example, um, I had a gentleman one time approach me and say, hey, you know, I'd like to baptize my daughters. Uh, my daughters have come to faith in Christ, and I'd like to be the one to baptize them. Um, <clears throat> you know, for most people, they would have thought, well, that's not, no big deal, or, you know, for sentimental reasons, why don't you just let the guy baptize his kids? Um, but, you know, it's my conviction that as part of our church, 
it really should be the officers of the church that should be doing the baptizing. Um, and, and all of that has to do with the authority of the church. And so um, I think that's what kind of lends itself to have an orderly church. Uh, if one person gets to baptize his or her daughter, I mean, then where, do, where does it end, right? You open up that, you open up that floodgate of, you know, sort of, uh, I, don't want, I don't know what you would call it, sacramental anarchy. I don't know. You know, you just have people baptizing anybody. And, 